So what are we filming today, Josh? What are we up to? Today, we're going to head off into the wilds of College Settlement with Old Man Mike, where he's gonna show you how to forage, otherwise known as wild edibles. Ooh. So, wild edibles, first of all, there's a couple things we have to remember. Do ne never eat anything unless you know exactly what it is, because we want to be safe. And there's certain places where you can eat things and certain places which shouldn't eat things, which we will talk about later. So Rebecca, we're bringing you along on this wild edibles hike yes. as our taste taster. Yes, I'm prepared for that. All right, thanks. You'll be completely honest about the stuff Mike's having you taste? Yes, right, I'm good. ready to be a completely honest and forthright wild edible gourmand today. All right, gourmand, let's head off. Gourmand. Let's head up on, out on the uh, college settlement wild edibles hike with Mike and Josh and Rebecca and hopefully we all survive. Let's do it. Oh, oh ready now, ready right <laughs> Okay, so in nature, about 97% of the plants in our environment have edible parts to them, but we just can't eat anything because some plants are poisonous, some plants will make us sick, some plants are only edible for one week out of the year, some plants are only edible <laughs> <laughs> so, but a lot of plants are really good for us. And for example, this is one. This is a white pine tree, an eastern white pine tree. And the reason I know it's a white pine tree, if I take one of these things off, and it's got these little things, there's five, <laughs> there's five needles to a bud or a vascule. And if there's five of them, we know it's a white pine. So what's cool about a white pine tree even though we can't eat it. I'll get to it in a minute. It has a lot of vitamin C in the needles. But if we swallow, if we stick these in our mouth and chew them up and swallow them, we don't have the right kind of microbes in our stomach to digest them, so they're just gonna come out in your poop the same way that you swallowed them. So you could make tea out of them, but Rebecca didn't bring you the pot of hot water, which I can't believe. So what you can do with them, you can take them and you can stick them in your mouth, you can chew on them and suck on them or whatever you want to do. And then when you, after they're in your mouth for a little bit, you can spit them out or throw them on the ground. Because they have a lot of vitamin C. They are really, really good for you. So we, vitamin C is one of the things that our body doesn't make. And we have to get it from plants and things that we eat. It's delicious. Well, not so much this tree. There's other trees that taste better. But, so, uh, for example, vitamin C, our body doesn't make, we have to get it from foods that we eat, and one of the foods that we eat is oranges. And uh, a couple hundred years ago, sailors from around the world would get sick from a lack of vitamin C. They got some kind of illness. And what was that illness called, Josh? Scurvy. Especially pirates. And then they figured out that it was just a lack of vitamin C, and if they would have taken oranges or lemons with them on the ships, they wouldn't have gotten scurvy. So this is an eastern white pine. Now, I will eat it here at camp, but if I am elsewhere, I will not even touch it because uh, a lot of uh, parks and cities and townships, they spray for, for, spray for mosquitoes. We, we are a chemical-free camp, so I know that if I'm here, we don't, there's nothing on this tree that could possibly harm me. So it's first perfectly safe to eat here, but not, like if you're walking, if you're not sure, just please don't eat it because we don't want you to get hurt. It's ground that grows everywhere around here. It's called plantain, and there's nine varieties that grow in Pennsylvania. And when it's about the size of a quarter, it would be really good to eat. Right, it tastes a little bit like spinach. Right now, you would want to cook this because it's bigger, uh, and it's, it's kind of like going to be kind of tough because it's old. But what's really cool about this plant is if you roll it up and you break it with your teeth to get it to get the juices starting to flow. If you have an insect, a spider bite, a bee sting, you rub it on your insect bite, it works better than the stuff that you buy at a store. And it grows everywhere. So there's nine different kinds that grow in Pennsylvania. And it's called plantain. And it came over with the Europeans in the 1500s. And the native Americans lived, uh, that were here, whenever they saw this gr growing, they knew there was a white settlement nearby. So it's an invasive species, but very, very useful. And right next to it down here, we have these little things that everybody considers a weed. And this is white clover. And you can eat the flowers. They sort of taste, remind me of celery. Sometimes they're uh, kind of dry and not so good. 
but there, sometimes they are really good. So it's two things that we saw here. And, uh, when, and when we see more plantain, I'll point it out as we walk along. Have some clover. How does it taste, Rebecca? Invigorating. Hmm. <laughs> so hard to say. Josh, how's the plantain? It's actually pretty good. Okay, so here we have another little plant here that's a wild edible. These are blackberries. They're not quite ready to eat because they're blackberries and they'll be ready to eat when they're black. And most things only are around for two or three weeks during the year anyhow. So maybe we can come back in a couple weeks and when these actually change colors and they're ready to eat. There are a few over here that Karen can come over here that are, they're, they're just starting to turn red. They're not, they're, these are blackberries, so we're not going to eat them until they're black. And there's a whole bunch of them growing back in here. And they're pretty good. They're actually really good. They're a little bit sour than the ones that we buy at the store. So during, <coughs> during the spring, we had a bunch of onion grass growing in here. You all know what that looks like. There's a little onion on the bottom which you can eat. Well, this was the flower, and it's going to seed. And you can eat these little seeds that are on the top. And they're, they get, especially when they get dry, like the one that Josh has in his hand, which is bigger. They get, they get, it's almost like eating like toasted onion, and they're really good. And you can hear the crunch. Very good. You might want to stay away from me for a while. <laughs> Snack, and they're only, a, they're only out for a couple times, a couple weeks during the summer too, so they're gonna look like this. So, another berry bush that we have at camp, and these are black raspberries. And they're going, these go red, and then they turn to like a purple color. And that one's probably almost ready to eat, but they are going to get black. And we don't have a lot of these that grow around camp, but they're really good. And th this, they're almost, they'll be, this, they'll be done in another week and a half, and they won't have any more berries growing on them. So this is a black raspberry. And they're really good. And uh, they're delicious. Let me see if I can find any more. They're, they're still red, they're not quite ready to eat yet. So, unlike the store, remember they're only around for a couple of weeks and that's true of like most of the things that we eat. Because most of our food, like we can go to it every day to the supermarket and get strawberries. Strawberries only grow around here in June. So the strawberries that we're buying the rest of the year are either coming from Florida, Texas, California, and in the wintertime, most likely from uh, South America. So, they, they, so, a question we get a lot in the summer from the kids is there's a kind of leg, urban legend that red berries are poisonous in the wild and blackberries are good to eat. Is that true? <laughs> Not Some red berries, so red in, the, in nature generally means danger but there are some red berries that are very safe to eat. Hopefully we will find some this morning because there's a, these wine berries, they look like a raspberry, they are safe to eat. The, the round ones that are smooth, smooth and shiny red, don't eat those. Don't eat those. All right, but again, if they're not on camp, they shouldn't eat the That's berries. That's right, and I only eat stuff on, or if I know that they're, they, I'm someplace that is chemical free. Like if we're in the middle of the Rocky Mountains and there's a berry bush growing there, I'm pretty sure that they're not spraying pesticides there. So here's another berry that we can eat that, that is everywhere in this part of the country. They look like raspberries, but they're actually called Chinese wine berries because it's a plant that originally came from China. And they are everywhere and they just, they grow in the, sh in, they like shady areas or not full sun, I should say. And they are delicious and you can eat them. And there's going to be a lot of them over here. We have a lot of wineberry plants here at camp, and they grow all over this, in the, all over in this part of the country. They're really good. This is what they look like before they, uh, the fruit comes out. Example of a plant that is edible, but tastes disgusting. And the reason I know what it is, the stem is square. This part is square. Anything with a square stem is part of the mint family, and this is wild mint, but it's disgusting. It's I don't think you would want to eat it. It doesn't taste like any mint that I've ever seen, but it is edible. So just because it's edible doesn't mean it's going to taste good. Got that? Okay. Another plant that is edible. It's really a cool plant. It's an invasive species. It's called garlic mustard, and this is near the end of its life cycle. Uh, in the spring when it first pops up, which you're not going to see now, it's got leaves and they taste like garlic. They have a mild garlic flavor. They're delicious. And then the flowers come out and the flowers uh, 
they have, they'll, have, they'll taste like garlic also. And then we have these things that are the seed pods. And this is also the edible point. point. So you put, take, take these little sticks, you rub it on your, you roll it above your hand, and you're gonna get these little tiny blacker brownish seeds. And they have a peppery garlic flavor to them. So you can pop them in your mouth, but in order to taste them, you have to, you're gonna have to crack them with your teeth. Because if you just put them on your tongue, yeah, you have to crack them open. And what, what kind of things can you use these for, Mike? Seasoning, make mustard. I've heard some people use them on their salad. You, yep, you can put them on anything. I get almost a, a horseradishy kind of flavor from them. Josh always tells me it reminds him of wasabi. Wasabi. <laughs> Sometimes it's more spicier than other, but they're everywhere and the animals around here don't know that they can eat them and they are delicious. So you, we can basically eat the whole plant and we can eat it at different times of the year, except for the roots. So. That's uh, garlic mustard, and that grows everywhere in this part of the country also. The poison ivy grows everywhere also, and we all know that we don't like it. But, poison I and, but animals can eat poison ivy and it doesn't bother them. So just because an animal is eating it doesn't mean it's safe for us. I mean, goats eat poison ivy, birds love to eat poison ivy berries. We shouldn't eat them at all, we shouldn't go near the plant. And what's kind of interesting, it could look like a plant, it could look like a vine, and sometimes it actually looks like a bush. And other plants that we can eat, or parts of it, but not very well, would be like grass. Now we don't have the right kind of teeth to, to grind these up like a, like a cow does. Uh, and so we're not going to be able to, to, to really eat this. But we can take it and we can stick it in our mouth and we can chew on it. And some of it is really sweet and tasty, but this isn't something that we could digest. So we, and our teeth, are, we don't have the right kind of teeth to grind it up. And we don't have the right kind of microbes in our stomach to digest it either, but we can chew on it. And sometimes the stems of the grass taste really, really good. Okay? Another very popular plant that we find growing over, it's basically a weed. They have uh, three heart shaped leaves, and they will grow little flowers on them and these little seed pods that are getting really juicy. And this is called wood sorrel, and it tastes like lemons, or what we refer to here as the lemonade plant. And you can just take it off and pop it in your mouth and it is delicious. You will enjoy this one, definitely. Okay, it's called wood sorrel. People sometimes mix it up with clover. So you can actually buy uh, the, the farm version of this like at Lowe's. They may call it French sorrel and it's just bigger leaves, but it tastes exactly the same. Got a good look at that one? Nom, nom, nom. That, that is edible. It's called Pennsylvania Smartweed. It's disgusting and I'm not eating it, but it is edible. <laughs> invasive species it's called myelmidin and they got these little they got these triangular leaves on them and if you pull a leaf off you can eat it it has a lemon flavor to it not nearly as good as the wood sorrel but not bad and it grows everywhere and it's called myelmidin because it seems like it travels a mile in a minute and it's a weed that lives around here and the animals don't know they, they can eat it either another invasive species uh, here we see one of the one of the wonders of uh, natural pollinators so this is a uh, this is a squash plant which you typically see growing in a garden uh, intentionally grown and here oh and actually here's one on the other side of the fence the actual squash and uh, this squash is growing on its own up along the fence line that is absolutely crazy actually Here's another type of clover that's growing, and uh, per clo this is purple clover, and clover is really good for the environment because it's a nitrogen fixer, and what that means is it takes nitrogen out of the air and it puts it in the soil so that the other plants can use it. And this is a little bit sweeter than the white clover. This one's a little bit dried out, so I'm just going to pull off the top of it and eat the flowers. It's really good. Delicious plant to eat. It's purple clover, and we usually find it growing on the edges. Okay, so we have a we have a lot of black walnut trees here, and this is a black walnut. And some squirrel cracked it open and ate what was in the middle. Now we can eat them. We they usually fall in the fall, in the autumn. And what you do is you would take them and you would put them in your like in your house and let them dry out over the winter. And then in February and February March you can crack them open and eat them. 
Uh, they are, there's not a lot of nut inside each one, and they are a little bit bitter, but people do use them to bake with. So this is called a black walnut, and some squirrel around here just went nuts on this. This is Queen Anne's Lace. It's a, another wild edible, and it's a really cool flower because it's got this little thing in the middle, and when it rains, what it's going to do is it's going to face down so the pollen doesn't get washed away. But it's, it's in the carrot and parsley family, so you can take the leaves off and you can eat this and it tastes like parsley. Really good parsley. <laughs> so that's Queen Anne's Lace and it grows everywhere around here in this part of the country. Mm -hmm.